Is that going to show you how tricky recruiting can be? Because yeah. you've been a lot of big places where highly recruited guys, yeah. it just doesn't yeah. work out for them, and then right. you get a guy that's under the radar, keeps getting confidence, keeps getting confidence, right. and all of a sudden he ends up in the NFL. I mean, you saw it here. Jaquan Jarrett, right? Muhammad. Let's go down the list. Steve Maneri, right? What are we talking about here? He was a tight end, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my experience, that's why I love the camps that we do, because my experience has always been, I, I, I took guys to places I've been before that other people wouldn't take, but I took them. I, there was a kid I had in Florida, John, John Halapio. I took him down here. People were like, what are you taking that kid for? He's going to be a first round draft pick. I mean, it's not an exact science. It's just not an exact science. It's hard to measure someone's passion for the game, their heart, their ability to develop. Some guys have great talent, but they're resistive to coaching. They don't really develop. Other guys, are, are, are they, they're like sponges, and they develop unbelievably. And so that's why you know we have a great niche here, and there's great players right around here. And you just have to do a good job of finding the right guys. You know. He might not be the fastest guy. Maybe he's a step slower. Maybe he's an inch shorter. You know, maybe he doesn't meet the so-called. Look what the NFL does, the exact same thing. They ding guys all the time out of the combine. But then guys that don't get invited to combine make, make the NFL. Because how do you measure? Like, sometimes we put too much on, you know, that. We've gone down this path in the last, probably, I'd say, the last seven years of the so-called, like, you know, he's a freak and he's a this and he's a. Put the tape on Let's watch the tape. Is he a really good football player? Does he have great passion for the game? Does he have great desire, work ethic? You know, right? You know what I mean? And and so those guys are out there. And I think that that's the key for Temple, for us. You know, we, we've got to know that, you know, what what, are, what do we want here? Do we want the fastest team in the country or do we want the toughest team in the country? I mean, what do you want? Do you want guys that are high character guys that are coachable? Do you want uh, the guy that has got the most stars that you can recruit? I don't. Because whoever rates those guys really probably doesn't really know what they're rating, okay? So, I mean, it's just a philosophical thing. And, you know, there's a there's a real lot to it. And then, of course, there's luck to it. There's luck to it. You know, we've all been involved in recruiting kids that have turned out way better than you thought they would, and other guys that didn't. So there's an, there is an element of of good fortune involved in that. You talked last week about just being a tough part of the season, like the belly of the season, yeah. but your team's played – about as well as you could have drawn it up the last couple of weeks. What does that tell you about them? You know I maybe? think that there's no resistance. They're totally bought in, and they're buying what we're selling. Bottom line, we're they're reacting. You know, they're, I felt that way the last couple of weeks. To be honest with you, I felt that we had we, we had that blip, and you know, human nature got a hold of our team in a lot of ways, and we shook it real hard. And they responded. I'm not so naive to think that that can't happen again. But at this point, we at least got their attention and they bought in. There are fragile moments in any football program throughout the year. And this is what, you know, the dynamics, the psychology of coaching of football that sometimes people don't look, they just look at scores and this and that. But there are points in the season that are pretty critical points that sometimes can go one way or go the other. You know, the old saying, nothing's as good as it seems, nothing's as bad as it seems, somewhere in the middle is reality. You know, it's my whole take on college football or sports in general are it's, it's, it's fragile. <laughs> it's fragile. And we were able to shake that tree, and the kids bought into what we did, and we got to where we are. Now, here's where we are right now. We could be having a different conversation a week from now. It's, 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 it's just like that. But I think the thing is, is we try to explain to them what I explained to you, that, okay, here we are now. We're in the, now we're in the belly of our season, and this is where teams falter, and this is why they falter. You know, what, what, what goes into making teams falter? Well, sometimes it's selfishness. It's human element. You know, it's, you know, you, you know there's a part of your team that's not bought in. They're disgruntled for whatever reason. There's, you're not all pulling in the same direction. All of a sudden, bam, you get stung and you lose. Then you got to respond. Some do, some don't. The ones that don't sometimes go on a slide. You know, and, and you just got to manage all that. I feel like in the, in the end, a lot of times, it's kind of like a race. You see that last 100 meters, if you've got a great bunch of competitors, they'll compete and finish that race. That's a little, sometimes, sometimes if you're not too banged up, that can be easier. The beginning, the end, but the middle is tricky. It's tricky sledding. Uh, that's where we are right now. I'm very, very concerned about this football team we're playing. I'm very concerned about this game in general. 
because I know we're playing a well-coached team. I know we're playing a highly motivated team that right now feels like this is a must-win. Of course, we all feel that way. And it's at home for them. And our kids are coming off of two big games. They're going to have to go on the road and play, play with a tremendous amount of motivation and intensity. And we're, you know, people, we're young too now. You know, we don't, you know, we've got young leadership, so to speak. And uh, this is where, you know, those real older veteran teams get, get an edge with you a little bit. So, you know, we're just going to have to do a great job this week and, and, again, hope to stay healthy. I feel like, you know, I told you that last week, we're walking that line right now. I'm anxious to get to next week where there's a couple of days where we can get them, get them off, get them, get them away. I think they need a break. Does the fact that they came in here last year and almost pulled out, I mean, I know you weren't here, but I mean, a lot of kids, at least you, you don't really have to worry maybe about getting their attention as much? I hope. We've talked about it. Sure have talked about it because that's exactly what happened. It was right down to the wire, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just you get spoiled when you have a couple of these wins. Now, we've had these wins where you're, you know, you get kind of way up, kind of almost all of our wins have been that way. And then, of course, we had the two games we didn't play so well. well one of them wasn't too, too bad. We didn't finish it properly. The other one we just played, we just really didn't, didn't play well at all. So, you know, um, sometimes when you're smiling in the fourth quarter too much, you know, you, you kind of think that's the way it's going to be all the time. We all know it's not going to be that way. You're going to you're going to hit these rough spots along the way. They just you're going to get challenged. I don't care how good a team I've ever been a part of. It doesn't make any difference. You're in those games that are knuckle biters, and you have to find a way to win them in order to have a great season, or you don't. And we're going to hit those. It may happen this week. Do you uh, when you face Toledo the week before that? Did you have any kind of feeling about how your team would play against them? You get a feeling at the end of the week we're going to come out gangbusters, or maybe we're not going to come out gangbusters. I do, but it doesn't always. I'm not always right. But at the end of the week, going into the Toledo game, the kids would tell you I flat and said it on Friday. I was horrified. I just felt like we just had a bad week. And, you know, of course, you don't tank your team at that point, but it, but I did say it to them, and in my gut, I was very concerned about it. But I, you know, you know, I mean, I'm a competitor. I thought we'll overcome this. But then, you, in hindsight, you look back and you say, well, we didn't. You know. But I thought we had a great last two weeks, and we ended up playing great. But I, I got to tell you, I've been in those weeks where you didn't feel it was great, and you played great too, right? So it's not infallible theory, but it usually holds pretty true. You know. Sometimes you got to look at what causes your trouble spots during the week. Last week we had a couple trouble spots, but it was solely because we had too many guys out of practice with injuries. That, that, that's what happened a little bit last week. So I, I kind of, and I said to myself, we'll be all right. And it was, that's what's causing it. It's not, nothing to do with anybody's attitude. It's just a mere fact that we're missing a couple too many pieces right now. And it's disrupting our practice. Do you expect John Palumbo to be back this week? Are you still kind of a game time decision? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm hoping, I mean, no, he is going to be. But we're just trying to ease him back. And so, you know, hopefully he'll get some more reps this week, you know. And we got to be careful with Derek, too. And, you know, so we just got a little, you know, it's, it's what it is. Everybody's the same. Coach, you mentioned uh, the quarterbacks and the receivers in their passing game. Your pass defense has been great the last two weeks. No touchdowns, three picks. How do you think they stack up against these guys? I mean, we, we always like how our defense stacks up, but you know, you also have a great deal of respect for who you're playing. You know, so they're really sound schematically, and their quarterback is a good player. He's been really good. I mean, you know, usually when your throw game is good, your quarterback is it's real accurate. You know, and then. I mean, you know, like you look at us and you say, like, we're a real running team. You look at them and say they're kind of a throwing team. I mean, you know, that's kind of what they do. So, you know, last week we played a team really, though, that was a running team, like us. Not to, I'm not saying they don't throw well. I'm just saying they're, they're more of a running team. You know, we felt that Ball State, we were playing a team that was more of a throwing team. That quarterback we felt was quite good. But we did a great job of disrupting him. And I think you have to do that against these quarterbacks. you got to get them out of a rhythm. It's about those guys in there, they're, they're pretty talented guys. They get in a rhythm. They can slice and dice you pretty good now if you let them. You know. But we've done a great job with our pass rush, you know, hurrying quarterbacks. Well, let's see. Anything else?